During the council discussions uh, regarding this tax, Mayor Bobby Schreiber made three very important points. Number one, he said the city is rich, and to say the city is in some sort of financial extremis is not borne out by the facts. <clears throat> Number two, he said in the conduct of the campaign, we don't want there to be a fear that services will be lost if this measure does not pass. Saying your 911 service, your emergency service is at risk is not true. And the third point he made was, because we have not managed the cost side of the budget well enough, I don't think it's the right time to ask the people for more tax revenue. In 2008, the council put on the ballot Measure SM, which was a 10% utility tax. And it was more than a tax on just gas, electric, and water. It's cell phones, pay-per-view, downloads, cable TV. And the purpose of that tax was, quote, to preserve essential city services and school programs. So we gave them the money in 2008. This proposal is a sales tax increase. Every resident of Santa Monica will pay more for every taxable purchase you make in Santa Monica. Shopping near home will be more expensive for you. And this tax is forever. There's no sunset. It's likely to go up. That's basically our position. Thank you. And it was quite a conversation. You, you know how much our schools need help. But before we talk about that, I think it will help us to understand the true scale of the problem we face. We're waiting to hear what California state budget is going to be. We know they've made the deal. We don't know what it is yet. When it's revealed to us on Wednesday, what we do know is it's going to contain still more bad news for cities and for schools. And I don't see Sacramento getting better anytime soon. We send some really good people from this district, but Sacramento's not doing well. California state governments already cut school funding drastically. That's part of their problem. Sacramento also recently took $21 million in the city of Santa Monica. So they're dipping into our pockets as well. Yes, that is true. Um, we can still make our local city and our local schools work if we guarantee local revenue that Sacramento can't take. And that's what we're doing here. We know we're going to need that local revenue. Measures Y and YY create ongoing locally controlled revenue that Sacramento can't take away from us. And I support both. I personally don't say we support one and the other. That, that makes no sense to me. What's particularly encouraging about Measures Y and YY is they represent the entire community working together. You've got the city and the school district side by side saying, yes, we can work together to make our community, our entire community work. So Tom Larmore is going to explain more about how this is of immediate and crucial importance to the I've been a resident of Santa Monica for 35 years. My two children went to school all, all the way through the public schools. My daughter taught at Smash. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the education that they received here. It set them both up in very good uh, position for, uh, for the future. We have a major problem with this in the school district, as Kevin alluded to. In the last two years, the state has taken $20 million away from the schools, just about 10% of its operating budget. And as Kevin mentioned, there's no sign of that changing. As a result of that, the districts made significant and, and very critical budget cuts. They cut $4.5 million in fiscal year 09-10. They would have cut $7.2 million out of this year's budget and laid off perhaps 60 or so teachers and counselors, except for the heroic efforts of Save Our Schools, a volunteer effort that raised $1.6 million in two months, and a one-time federal grant. So instead of having to cut $7 million out of the budget, they were able to cut only about $4.5 million. That's $9 million cut out of the school budget in the last two years. And things are projected to continue, if not get worse, the next year and the year after that. The, the only way they've been able to do even that is to dip into their reserves and deplete them this year from $27 million down to 11 at the end of the school year. End of the next year, from 11 down to $1.5 million. So this is a critical loss for our community if we can't find a way to replace at least some of those funds. Thanks a lot. Which is the sales tax increase.
will go to San Juan Unified School District. In fact, all the actions so far seem to be contrary. If you know from the experience of the city council, there was supposed to be an accelerated clause for the school district that was supposed to come kick in regarding the facilities use. And as you remember, it was just uh, 18 months ago, tooth and nail, the schools had to fight for that money. Why an advisory measure, which has no bearing whatsoever on guaranteeing any money for the school <coughs> district, is going to save our schools, is disingenuous and an insult to the people that work hard for the schools. This is not what we need now. We need real solutions for the schools. Should the city of Santa Monica be helping support our Santa Monica College of Schools? I, I say yes, and in fact we do. Uh, we're now up to $7.6 million a year in direct cash grants the city gives the schools, plus there's another 22 to 25 million that we spend every year on youth programs. We are, I think, smart enough in Santa Monica to realize that our youth are our future, and that investing in good education is good for our community, and good for property values and for many other things. There are many reasons why this is the right thing to do at the right time. And I hope that everybody in this community realizes how few options the schools have and how important it is that we pull together at this moment after they've tried so hard with the parcel tax and with the work they did over the summer on Save Our Schools to come up with the money to keep disaster from hitting the classrooms of The city's taking advantage of the disappointment of Prop A to squeeze more money out of the residents. With nothing ensuring that money from this will go to the schools, how can you possibly say that this is going to save our schools? How's your response to that, Tom? Well, Don, Don first, uh, what I find disingenuous is your statements coming from people who oppose the parcel tax and who have probably opposed virtually every tax for the benefit of the schools over the last it's several just years. this kind of special interest that's happening right, right here. Let, let Tom this is not the question a question out. Don, measure. Don. This is a tax Don. measure to benefit the city, and that's exactly what people that have protested the, the parcel taxes for the schools in the past. That's the argument we have. Mr. Larmore, has that been my argument for years? No. But <laughs> what I want to say is... Okay. Let, let, let him answer the question, Don, first. Okay. Okay. Let finish. That's the question. <laughs> It's very clear that half of this money that gets raised out of the, the new sales tax will be dedicated to the public schools. To, to say anything other is just to deny reality. From the very beginning, back in July, when this bet was proposed, our city manager said one of the reasons I want to put this on the ballot is to get money for the schools that they so desperately need. I heard, I've heard him say that many times. You've heard virtually every council candidate, and you'll hear it again tonight, I'll expect, after we're done, support the measure for that very reason. All of the volunteers who are out there working so hard, who just finished their heroic efforts for Save Our Cities, are out there working hard for that very reason. So to me, the fact that the, the measure is worded more specifically is irrelevant. There's no question that this money is, will and will be dedicated to the public schools. Don? Well, well, let me read something. Now, now see if this is irrelevant to you. This is the minutes of the council meeting. It was a consensus of council to direct staff to return on July 17th with a proposed advisory companion measure, non-binding measure, to express uh, voters' opinion on how to spend the funds, and that it will contain language proposing that 50% of the revenue be directed to Santa Monica Malibu School District. But yet when this measure came back, it said to education. They dropped the, the requirement that the money go to the school district, and that's what a lot of people are very upset about. Where was our school district, where was our representatives to stand up and at least raise their hand in the council meeting and say, hey, this is not what you guys promised us. You gave us an entirely different measure to vote on. Well, Kevin, you're on the council. I mean, can you address that? I mean, is the council's intention for this money to go to K through 12 and not say uh, Santa Monica College or any other education program? From the very first time I met with our city manager about this measure, before it, it went public and went to a vote and got put on the ballot, it was very clear that the intent here was for the community as a whole to support the city and the schools through a single measure. And, and then Measure YY was placed on the ballot to affirm that. Uh, but it was always the intent. 
Now, I know that there have been some calls for funding for senior programs that Marist College does as part of Santa Monica College. The city may fund that out of senior programs. But we're talking here about helping our public schools. That's who we're talking about. So trust us for us to give the schools the money. Is that well, this is coming from people who have argued against giving the schools any help time and time again. So, you could so I, I'll choose five to trust. words that said Santa Monica, Malibu Unified School District, Santa Monica School. Oh, there was a reason why that wasn't included, was there not? Right. The, we have a very strange system here in California, and I've got a lot of strange systems, but, but this particular one says that if you have a tax measure that is dedicated for a special purpose, it requires a two-thirds vote. If you have a tax measure that is for general purposes, goes into the general fund, then it only requires a 50% vote. So if the concern was that the wording of the advisory measure had to be done very carefully so that there wouldn't be a challenge uh, after it passed that in fact it should have gotten two-thirds uh, in order to be valid. There's no, but going back to what Kevin said and what I said before, there's absolutely no question in anyone's mind who's involved with this that this money goes to the schools. And uh, if this passes, I expect to suggest to the council that the first thing they do is amend the existing contract with the schools to add this money to it. Uh, measure YY is an advisory measure. It has no force of law at all. It doesn't compel the city council to, to do anything. So the constitutional requirement of a two-thirds vote would not be applicable to a measure that has no force of law at all. I think they did that because they wanted they want the discretion to do it with do other things with it. Now the Santa Monica College Board of Trustees endorsed measure Y and YY indicating that they wanted some of that money. So I think that they made the, they changed it from the school district education because down the road they have no intention at all or some other council will be able to say, we're going to use it for something else. And actually when the pension bond hits and the state public retirement system tells the city how much more money they want to cover up for their stock losses, they're going to say, well, measure YY's advisory and the pension, our pension obligations are mandatory. So. We don't. We can't give you the money this year. That's what I think is going to happen. Thank you. I think when you're talking about an advisory measure that represents the will of the voters of the city of Santa Monica, and that advisory is being given to a city council who's elected by the voters of Santa Monica, it's a pretty darn powerful advisory. I can't quite imagine the argument I'm hearing here that, uh, oh, that there's some little possibility here that money won't go to the schools, and so therefore we shouldn't do anything and let the students who are in our schools now just go down the tubes, and maybe in 10 years we'll figure out a better way to fund schools in California, but meanwhile our kids will just have to fend for themselves. That makes no sense at all. Look, how many of you in this community ever thought you'd see Tom Warmore and me <laughs> sitting together? <laughs> of importance and Amen. unity that this represents for our city and for our schools. Amen. This is one of those rare uh, times when our community is pulled together and only a few outliers are saying, oh no, no, we can't do that. Yes, we can. And yes, we're going to pass. Why, why, why? Because our city and our schools... I think with the gentleman, the point he's making, one of the points